Seis e es, seis e mais só seis e es, seis e es, tu e a win. Mais só seis e es, seis e es, seis e mais só seis e es, seis e tu e a win. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you this morning. I glorify your name, I honor your name, my Father. I adore you, for there is none like you, Jesus. You are worthy to be exalted, you are worthy to be glorified, you are worthy to be magnified. Thank you, Master, this morning, oh Lord. Thank you for this moment that you've created, my Father. That I may share your word with your people, oh God. And I pray that, my Father, you are going to bless your people. Bless your people, Jehovah, this morning. And glorify yourself in their lives. I give you praise and I give you honor. As I speak your word, my Father, I pray for revelation of your word. Holy Spirit of God, take over and, 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 and guide us uh, as... I preach this word this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome every one of you, uh, wherever you are, to this service. And I know that um, God has got good plans over your life. The Bible says that we shall live by the word of God. We don't live by bread. We live by the word. And therefore it is necessary for, for us to eat the word so that we may live, so that if we don't eat the word, then uh, we may not be able to live. And that is why it's necessary for us this morning to hear the word of God. I want you to tune with me uh, to open your Bibles in the book of Daniel chapter 5. The book of Daniel chapter 5. I want to read from verse 1. And then uh, we will continue. And this is what the Bible says. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the, the 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 part of the hand that wrote then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosed and his knees knocked against each other The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck, and he shall be the third rule in the kingdom. Command us to skip and go to verse 13. Verse 13, the Bible says, um, Then was Daniel brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom the, my father, the king, brought from Judah? I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now, the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not give 
uh, the interpretation of the of the thing. Want us also to skip again. We go to verse uh, to go to verse twenty five. And this is the writing that was written. Mene mene tekel a farasin. Let's continue. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Verse 26, 27. This is the interpretation. Tekel have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Perez. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Mendes and to the Persians. Let's continue to verse that one. No, let's continue. Then, that's verse, 20, verse 29, the Bible says, Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third rule in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldean slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Praise the Lord. I know that you have tuned in this morning, and I want to use this uh, part of the scripture so that we can get to learn something from this story of Belshazzar. Belshazzar is the one that took over from uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He was his son. And as you know that Nebuchadnezzar also was worshipping other gods until that time when uh, God had even to change him to become like an animal and uh, he did not obey God easily. But he obeyed God in a very tough way. Uh, he misused the house of God he took things from the house of God and misused it them. Because when you take something from the house of God and you use it for the wrong purpose, then we say that you are misusing the things in the, king, uh, in the house of God. So that was uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And then here later in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, after God changing him and he looked like an animal and ate grass like um, an animal because of his rebellion, the Bible says that later, Nebuchadnezzar had to change and he began to worship God because he used to worship other gods. But later in his life, Nebuchadnezzar changed and he was able to worship God. And here comes a son who also appears not to know, uh, to understand and not to know the God of Israel, not to know the God uh, of the heavens. And he begins to worship other gods. When this uh, Belshazzar takes over, uh, the kingdom from Nebuchadnezzar, he goes back into worshipping other gods. When you read your Bible properly, you will realize that Nebuchadnezzar never even gave regard unto God. He gave regard to other gods. He had gods of stone, he had gods of silver, he had gods of, uh, of, 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 of gold, he had, he had different kinds of gods. And he would give regard on, unto those gods, but not unto the creator of the heavens and the earth. So those are the things that he used to give regard unto. And the Bible says he had thousands of them, and he wanted to celebrate. So instead of giving regard unto God, he began to celebrate and to, uh, to, to, to just have make party for himself. Just, I think, because he felt that he had become victorious because of becoming a king and he never realized that it is God who puts people in power. So he never recognized God. He never gave God regard. He never even thanked God. And he got into uh, making feasts. And the Bible says he would drink wine uh, before his gods. He would, he would drink wine and he would make merry before his golden gods, his silver golds. And uh, the Bible says, uh, when he was drinking wine and praising the gods, remember he was not praising the God of Israel. He was, wash, he was praising these other gods, the God of 
stone, the god of silver, the god of brass, the god of iron, the god of wood. So he had all these material things he had made gods for himself. And he would praise them and not the living God. And the Bible says one time as he was celebrating, there was a writing that appeared on the wall. And he could see part of the hand that wrote the writing. But he could not uh, see the person writing it. He could see it. And the Bible says when he saw the writing on the wall, he was troubled. And the Bible says he began to shake so that he was very much troubled. And the Bible says he started looking for people who would, uh, who would interpret what was written on the wall. Because what was written on the wall was many, many tekel are sin. So those are the writings that were written on the wall. So he was looking for somebody that can do the interpretations of many, many tekel are sin. And the Bible says he called for the Chaldeans, he called for magicians, so that they can come and interpret the dream. But the, the, the writing on the wall, but they could not. It is Daniel, the man with the Spirit of God, who was able to interpret uh, the, the, the meaning of the words that were written on the wall. And we see Daniel interpreting what was written. And the Bible says he told him many. It means that God has numbered the kingdom and has finished numbering it. So God has many means. God has numbered your kingdom and has finished it. Tekel, he told him, it means that you are weighed in the balance and have been found wanting. You have been weighed in the balance and you've been found wanting. And then Perez, it means thy kingdom is divided and given unto the Mendes. That is what uh, 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 it means. That your kingdom has been uh, divided and given to the Mendes and to Farsin. I want to say this. When we become rebellious unto God, when we become very much rebellious, we get a curse from God. When, when you become rebellious and then you proceed and you, you, you begin to do iniquity before God, and God is displeased with you, then what God does, God curses you. And I want to say this curse that comes from God is the worst that you can get. When I was speaking about, uh, I, I was speaking about uh, becoming fruitful, uh, producing kingdom fruits, having uh, spiritual fruit, and I spoke about God, Jesus passing and, and, and finding and trying to look for a, a, a fruit from a, from, a, from a fig tree. And Jesus never found any, any fruit from that fig tree. And when he could not find a fruit from the fig tree, it is only the leaves were, that were full of, or, on that tree. Uh, Jesus, the Bible says, he cast the fig tree. And when he cast the big tree, uh, the fig tree, the tree uh, dried up. And this morning I'm showing you another example of a person that has been cast by God. Uh, 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 the Belshazzar is a human being now. This is a good example of a human being. When you are not able to produce fruit, when you are not able to bring a profit in the kingdom of God, and then uh, uh, you become rebellious, and you are full of iniquity, and you do not give regard unto God, then God will curse you. There are many things that can make God to curse you. One of them is when you become an idol worshiper, when you are not worshiping the true God, and you begin to worship other gods, you are you are calling a curse for yourself and this is what Belshazzar did I've been observing and looking at this uh, chapter and verse and I was looking at, at the, these verses and I realized that even after Belshazzar became the king instead of uh, uh, of, of thanking God uh, 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 of giving regard to God and thanking him just instead of realizing that it is God, the living God, who has who made him to take that position, he never praised the living God. He praised the gods of stone. He praised the gods of silver. He praised the gods of, of gold. He praised the gods of wood. Because the Bible says he had thousands of them. So he never, at any given time, praised God the living God. He never at any given time praised the God of Israel. 
he never at any time praised God, uh, the God that we worship. He praised the gods, the gods that are, are, have been made by man. He was able, he praised them, perhaps because of enabling him to become a king. And that is how he missed the way. And because of not recognizing God, and because of not realizing that it is God who, uh, who lifts people and who lifts men, and every time that we are lifted in this life, every time we are promoted, every time you get a job, every time you, perhaps you, you will be the next president of this nation. Uh, and if you become the president of the nation, it's good to take time and give thanks unto God. You need to thank God publicly. You need to thank God for your life. When your business is doing well, thank God. When your family is doing well, take time and give thanks unto God. When your life, when your health is okay, you need to give, take time and to thank God. So Belshazzar never did this, that. Instead, he started praising those gods which he, has, he had made for himself. He began to, to praise them and, and to celebrate and to take wine carelessly. And the Bible says there was a writing on the wall. And that writing was a writing of a curse. That writing was a writing of, a, of, a, of a somebody who has been rejected. I want you to know the Bible says when you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. So when you go away from God, then you will realize that even God leaves you. And therefore it is very important as we live to recognize uh, God in our lives and to give him priority and to draw nigh to, the, to our God. And when we draw nigh to our God, God will accept us. So Belshazzar was rejected by God because he never even gave regards unto him. And its leadership, the Bible says, he never even took law. There was a writing on the wall. And that writing on the wall was many, many tekel arfasim, that, uh, that, uh, meaning that God has numbered your kingdom. God has numbered your kingdom. And then tekel meaning that you have been weighed in the balance and you've been found wanting. Perez meaning that your kingdom has been divided and, uh, to Mendes and to Persians. Now, we can learn something from this story of, um, of uh, Belshazzar. And that is why I have brought it this morning. We can learn something. And I want you to know that these writings were written because God looked at his life and he realized that he was going in the wrong direction. And, and, and the Bible says that uh, many, meaning that you are, God has been observing all this time. God has been looking at you. God has been looking at your leadership. God has been numbering your kingdom. And he has found you. Uh, and he has finished. So when God finishes, when God finishes, it means it is time for judgment. And I'm here this morning to tell every one of us that you need to watch your ways. You need to watch yourself. How you live, you need to watch. And you need to ensure that every moment you are connected to God. Make sure that you don't go far from God. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So at this particular time, the writing was written on the wall to terminate the work of Belshazzar. So God has numbered your kingdom and has finished already numbering that kingdom. And the Bible says that tekel means that you have been weighed in the balance and you've been found wanting. When you are found wanting, it means that you are unfit. So all this time God has been weighing and looking at your kingdom. God has been looking at your kingdom. God has been observing your leadership. So everything that you do, God has been looking at it. And therefore after that, he has weighed and has found you wanting. Meaning that he has found you and fit to continue taking that position and then um, um, uh, Paris means that your kingdom has already been divided and given to the Mendes and to the Persians that is what happens when we go away from God we get a curse and when we get a curse we are found unfit when we are not uh, fit then whatever we have 
is taken and given to somebody else. And that is why I want you to know, in whatever you are doing, you are serving God. And you must serve Him with humility. You must serve Him uh, with fear and with trembling. So that because you are serving God, we cannot all become pastors. And I know that as I talk, I'm talking to business people, I'm talking to bankers, I'm talking to people doing different things. I want you to know that we cannot fit to be pastors, all of us. So wherever you are, I want you to know that it is God who has placed you there. In that business, God has placed you. And in as long as you are serving people, I want you to know that you are serving God. And that is why in wherever you are, you are supposed to give regard to God. There are many people who would want to begin a business like you, but they are not able to achieve. But you have achieved. It's because God has put you there. And it is upon you now to give regard to God. It is upon you to thank God for what he has given you. Don't be somebody that uh, murmurs every moment. Don't, che don't, thump, uh, don't beat your chest just to praise yourself, to say that you are educated and that is why you are, you are able to run a business. No, that is not the case. God has placed you there. And therefore, I want you to know that make sure that you don't become, you don't get proud because of your achievement but instead make sure that you give god regard instead you make sure that you thank god for that position where god has put you because if you, you if you are proud or if you you don't regard god in whatever you are doing then there is a possibility that there will be a writing on the wall you need to know when this writing was put on the wall it me meant that god had given time belshazzar to change and belshazzar proved not to change because be before before you uh when people be uh, change and they turn away from god they begin to do their own things and there is a duration that God gives his people before judgment. So at this particular time, judgment has already been done by God. And that is why he's saying that uh, God has observed your kingdom. God has observed your kingdom and has finished observing it. So all this time, God was numbering his kingdom. He was looking at the kingdom, looking how, how the man was behaving. And I want you to know that God is looking how you are behaving. So... At this particular time when the writing came to the wall, the, 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 it was time now for Belshazzar to be judged. God gives you time always. And that is why you see many people sinning, many pastors living a life of adultery, yet they preach and they do miracles. And that is why I pity people who follow miracles and wonders. You want to see all those miracles happening. Uh, that does not scare the devil. Even sinners can, can, can do miracles. Because many, many men of God backslide and they still uh, uh, do miracles and i want to give you a good example of samson samson would come from committing adultery uh, and he would still come and and when he lifts his hands power would still come upon him because god gives us time between where you begin sinning to judgment so this the time for belshazzar to be judged had come and that is why the writing was on the wall and this is something that we need to be careful about, all of us. To we need to be careful and we need to watch out that there be no writing on the wall. When the writing is on the wall, it is already judgment. And there is nothing that can be done about it. But now you can change your behavior. Now you can change how you live uh, so that uh, you live a good life. You give regards to God. Um, uh, uh, so that your kingdom is not divided. I've, I've said that when you are found unfit. So it's bad to see people who have been blessed by God, given businesses by God. But when you look at them, when God looks at them and sees that this, this person is unfit. And you see, when you are unfit, it is when you have a business and you cannot even go to, to the house of God because of that business. When It is when God gives you children and you cannot go to the house of God because of children. It, you become unfit. It is when you, are, you begin to do the wrong thing, the, the, the right thing, but actually at the wrong time. Because when you are needed by God, you cannot now, not, now not go because you feel that you are committed elsewhere. So make sure that whatever God gives you, that you don't allow him uh, to take it away from you. Because when you don't, you are not uh, are living right, then the writing is written on the wall. And even that which you have, is taken away the same way that belshazzar's kingdom was divided into Persians 
and to uh, it was given the Persians and the Mendes. And the Bible says, even after that, he never lived. After after the writing was written on the wall, uh, Daniel interpreted it to him, and he never lived. The Bible says that that night Belshazzar died. So when we live a rebellious life, there is a possibility of death. When we when we when we are not living right and when we are not giving regards unto God, there is a possibility that we will die. So when curse, and it is a sign of a curse, because death, I believe it is also a curse. Uh, where things, it's some, there are some things that come because of a curse. Uh, when you are cursed, you die. That is why the fig tree died. And that is why even Belshazzar died. Because his, his, whatever he was doing was taken and was given to other people. Uh, and I want you to, to challenge you this morning. Don't allow God to see you unfit. Because right now as I speak, when God looks at many people that are watching me, he sees them unfit. You become unfit because of the reasons that I've already explained. And I want to say this morning, make sure that you don't allow God to see you unfit. Because when you are unfit, you will be taken uh, from where you are. Whatever you have, shall be taken and shall be given to somebody else. Make sure that you use whatever you have for the kingdom. Make sure that in whatever you are doing, you capitalize on serving God. Make sure that as God leads you, as God blesses you, make sure that you give regard unto God. Make sure that you praise Him and Him alone. Because we serve a jealous God. Our God is a jealous God. And that is why we must be very careful. I believe that from this portion of the scripture, you have been able to learn more even as you begin your day. Make sure that uh, you begin your day with God and make sure that in whatever thing that you do, make sure that you are fit so that God will continue to lift you. God blesses you to become a blessing. So make sure that you are a blessing. Don't do contrary to the word of God so that you don't, uh, uh, you don't bring curse to yourself. And I know that God will bless you. I want to pray this morning. Uh, as I finish uh, these uh, teachings this morning, and I know that God will bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. Father, they have taken time to listen to me as I bring this word unto them. Lord, I pray for them in the mighty name of Jesus. I know that I've, I'm talking with people that you are blessed with different things. You bless them with families. You bless them with businesses. You've given them good jobs, my Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for them. The Lord, you will teach them on how to uh, on how to to uh, to give you regard in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for them this morning that my father, they will not be uh, preoccupied with what you blessed them with, O oh God. They will not lose their focus, O oh my father, but they will continue to worship you day and night. They will continue to seek the kingdom of God first in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for them that you will bless them, my father. Pray for them that you will glorify yourself in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Father, I pray that even when you weigh them, O oh God, they will be fit for what you have given unto them because they will remain in the house of worship, because they will use that which you have given unto them even to serve you. Father, I give you praise. May you bless them as they go to their businesses. Bless their businesses. Bless their families. Bless their lives. Bless their ministries, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for them. The Lord, that your blessing is going to be upon them, my Father. I destroy every curse in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for them. Take over their lives and glorify yourself in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. You've not received Jesus and you are watching me. I want to give you this opportunity so that you can receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. I want you to know that this is the time of your salvation because tomorrow you never know. You never know how it shall be tomorrow. You never know how it shall be tonight. So the best time for you to receive Jesus and so that you will not be able to regret it is when you give his, your life to him right now. And I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I give you my life. Come into me and transform me. From today, I believe you are the Son of God. You died on the cross for my salvation. I pray now that you will find a place in my heart. I give you praise and I give you honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 
uh, you've prayed that prayer, you are now born again. Uh, you need to turn around and uh, live for him alone. You need to die to yourself and begin to live for Jesus. And God will bless your life. I want us to give our offerings. I uh, want you to give your offering this morning. You can give your tithe. You can give your special seed. You can give your vow this morning. And I want to pray for that offering. On your screen is a number. That number, uh, you use it to pay your tithe and to all, through, for all your givings. And our God will bless your life. I want to pray for that offering. Father, I thank you. And I honor you, Father, for your people as they give. Lord, I pray that my Father... Uh, you will accept, Father, every giving that is done this morning. Pray that you bless your people in return. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much for tuning in. May God bless you very much. It has been a pleasure to speak to you. And I know that God will continue to do you good. Amen. <laughs>